Today I'm going to show you how to create custom professional watermarks in Adobe Photoshop that you can use again and again as a brush preset. So as you can see that I've got here, I've got the black one at the moment and I could change the color of it and just completely edit it and customize it as you like and change the size of it as well. So to get us started or just to begin just drag the image that you're going to add a watermark to into Adobe Photoshop and I'm using this lovely image here from Wikipedia Creative Commons which is a free file source online for images so once you've got that dragged and dropped we want to create our custom watermark so in this top gray panel here just right click and then select new document Bear in mind that bigger is always better, so if you scale an image down or if you scale your watermark down, then you'll find that you're going to keep a lot of the resolution going from bigger to smaller, whereas if you make something small and then try to make it bigger, you're going to lose a lot of the resolution and when you're changing the brush size later on, it's going to be quite a big factor. So just set the width to about 600 and the height to about 600 as well for a perfect square and set the background content to white and once you're happy, just hit OK. So now we've got this blank square to work with. First of all, I'm going to add my text. So press T on the keyboard to grab the text tool and make a pretty big box to have the text in. And the first text that I'm going to use, or the first font, should I say, is Paljane Jalalin Regular, which I downloaded from thefont.com. If you want to use some custom fonts from the font, or if you just want to check out where I get my stuff from, then watch this tutorial here and that will show you how to install fonts, where I get them from, and some other cool stuff as well. But if not, you want to just use the fonts that you've got, then just crack on as normal. So I'm going to call my project, or call my watermark, should I say, Scandi Photography. So I'll just set that to black, and I think I'll make it a bit bigger. So instead of just using this small menu, go over to Window, and then select Character to open up a better sort of prep, bleh, preset settings menu should we say I don't know so anyway I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger I'll change it to about 60 and I'm pretty happy with that just make that a little bit smaller and leave that there like so so just click the check mark then using the text tool or type tool again make another box and this time I'm going to put inside it photography but I'm going to use a different font again I downloaded this one from dafont.com so with Birth of a Hero, I'm going to type photography. Now I want this to be a, roughly about the same size as the top image because it always looks a little bit more professional. So I'm just going to mess around with the sizes until I get it roughly about right. So I'll say 41 does it for me, I think, and then just click away just to double check and let's mess around with it a bit. And I'd say, yep, yeah, I was pretty happy with that, starting to look pretty good. So if you want to move these around together, just move them towards the center or move them away, then just press control and select them both. So the highlighted blue and then control and T for transform and then just move it over because we're going to create the second part of our watermark so just click the check mark and leave that in the top left and get rid of the presets menu or the character menu as well now we're going to create a new layer on top so we've got layer 1 here and then press P for the pen tool now we're going to create some pretty weird shapes to wrap around it so firstly I'm just going to left click here and then left click and hold and then just drag that up there just to create a little bit of a curve shape and then press B for the brush tool and then just selecting a pretty strange brush I think I'll go with that one what's it called round point stiff double click on that and change the brush size I'd say to about 8 will do me and make sure the opacity is at 100% and the flow is at 100% as well and leave the foreground color as black next go back over to the pen tool so press P and then right click on your selection when you've got the plus and select stroke path so it's going to use the settings from the brush tool and then just click OK like so so now we've got a little bit of a curve right click on it and then 
delete path. So now we've got a new layer of this curve just on its own. So I'm just going to make a quick duplicate of it by pressing Ctrl and J in the layers panel. So now I've got two of them to work with. So going back to, in fact, I'll select the top one and then go to filter, distort, and there's a couple of good settings that you can use within distort, but I'm going to use twirl. Now zoom out a little bit just so we can see what's going on. And I'm just going to twirl this around just to make a bit of a odd shape, should we say? And that's starting to look pretty good to me. So I'll just hit OK. So we've got that one. Then select the one behind and go to filter, distort again, and then twirl. And this time I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller and then just hit OK so it starts to look like that. Now you can mess around with these by pressing Ctrl and T and moving them around a little bit but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have it slightly above like that. Click the check mark and then go to filter, blur and select Gaussian or Gaussian blur whatever it is and then just mess around with the radius so maybe go to blur it out a little bit more go to about 7 and then just hit OK and then I might just transform it Control and T and just move it around just a little bit more just to create a little bit of a weird shape I don't know so I'm going to merge these together now because I, I'm going to move them together so I'll just press Control and select them both and then Control uh, right click sorry and then merge layers. It is a destructive way to do it and if you want to do it the non-destructive way then just press Control and G to create a group but I don't need to I'm just going to keep these as they are so now that they are merged together I'm going to press Control and T to transform and then I think I'll just rotate this this way a little bit I don't know just have a look see what it looks like and I think I'll rotate it to about there that looks pretty good to me so I'll just click the check mark and then I'll select the Scandi and photography so select photography then hold control and select the Scandi layer or your type layer control and T to move it around again and then I'm just gonna bring this into the middle like so and I might make it a little bit smaller but if you want to do it in scale then go away from the selection hold shift and alt and then go over and rescale in size. So I'll move this up a little bit and this is starting to look pretty good for me now. I think I'll make it a little bit bigger so shift and alt and then just scale it up again just a little bit more actually and that looks pretty good to me. So I'm just going to click the check mark and now we're starting to well that's pretty much done I think I'll keep that as it is. So to create a brush preset out of that go to edit and then go to define brush preset so there you can see that it's in there and it's in the white box and it's only going to use the black selection so I'm going to call this one watermark 2 because I've already created one before and then just hit OK so now when you go back over to your brush tool you can see right at the bottom that you've got your new watermark so I'll go back over to my original image and then the idea is to make it not obtrusive so or intrusive should I say so if I just put that there it's you know it's really in the way and it's something that distracts your eye from the actual image and it takes it to your watermark which is not the idea we're just trying to protect the image and not make the watermark part of the image so if I just select a really light color say from around here and then make it a little bit smaller using the brackets under the plus and return key now bear in mind it does go up and down in 50s so if you want to make a custom change then just click the drop down and change it in there but I'm just going to make mine say about that big just so you can see it and then just place it down like so I'd probably if I was to do that really I'd make it a bit smaller like that and then I'd decrease the opacity as well so create a new layer on top stick it down and just decrease the opacity a little bit or change the blend mode to screen and that just lightens it up a little bit for you as well so 
always use you know try and use some some of the colors from the actual image because if you you know as you can see this is all sort of a similar color or a similar tone going across and if you use a completely different color like it has in the original one then it, it just doesn't look as good for me but that's how you create our watermark in Adobe Photoshop I hope you enjoyed this tutorial guys please like share and subscribe to my channel